Your Coca-Cola bottler presents... Claudia. Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax. And while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Now, David, now stop looking as if your face had been carved out of the side of a mountain. David, do you hear me? Or does driving make you deaf? How would you like me to look? Huh? You seem to forget that we're on our way to court. That I'm to miss a whole day at the office because you refuse to obey a sign that says no U-turn. That I'll probably have to bail you out. Well, that... after all, it's not every man whose wife gets a summons for making a U-turn when she shouldn't. It certainly isn't. It's not every man who has the satisfaction of saying I told you so. And it's not every man who has the pleasure of seeing his wife tried in a court of law. Why shouldn't you be overjoyed? <laughs> What's it like? You know, well, going to court. Oh, you've been to the movies, haven't you? Court is a very serious, sober, strict matter. Oh, I feel excited and impatient. Drive faster. One offender in the family is enough, thank you. The closer we get, the more I feel like Joan of Arc. Then we'd better stop right now. What do you mean? Joan of Arc was not a criminal. Am I? Oh, darling, you've never called me a criminal before. Mm, well, different situations call for different names. No, seriously, now what's it going to be like? Can't you wait and see? Well, you drive so slow, David. Well, in the first place, you're going to be asked to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I always tell the truth. The whole truth? Well, when it's not important. And in the second place, you will be not allowed to speak except when you're spoken to. Oh, just like at home when you're working. I know, yes. In the third place... In the third place... Yes, go on. Well, you'll see for yourself. Oh, I see. I get no third place. David, we're almost to the courthouse. Yeah, you just can't wait to be the center of attention, can you? It's the actress in me. Well, have you got your license with you, Betty Grable? I have got nice legs, haven't I? Mm, I always thought so. It's in my pocketbook. My licenses, I mean. Oh, well, my seams are straight. But I have my story straight, that I'm sure. Your story? Hmm. I just told you, you're supposed to tell the truth. Oh, well, my story's mostly the truth. Honestly. Well, you just stick to what happens. You'll be all right. You'll only get in trouble if you start embroidering or inventing. Now, David, you won't leave me, will you? No, I won't leave you. Won't be any fun if you did. Well, it's not supposed to be fun, even if I didn't. I know, but I can't help myself. I mean, I'm starting to get nervous, I think. Good, good. What's good about it? If you get nervous enough, you'll start realizing that this is a serious matter. As a matter of fact, I, I could have gotten you out of the whole thing without this business of going to court. But I didn't because I thought it'd be good for you. It might make a citizen out of David, you. David, I am a citizen ever since the day I was born. Well, you'd never know it the way you drive a car. Must we always go back to the way I drive a car? At least for the next little while, we <gasps> must. Well, we're there. There's the courthouse. Oof. It's so cold and so righteous. David... Please smile as if you meant it. Hmm. Don't be stuffy just because you're right for once and the court's on your side. Hmm. 32 steps up to the courthouse. I wonder why 32. Corridors, David. Floors so polished. Through that 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 big door, David. Mm -hmm. Go on in. Well, I, I don't like the way it looks. What looks? The court. Well, I'll tell them to get a new interior decorator. Shh, and sit 
down. Sit down right here. When do I come on? Probably not for hours. Hours? Yes, you're not the only one who violates traffic regulations. I'm not? No. Oh, darling, it's sweet of you to say that. David, we've been here hours and hours. According to the laws of the state of Connecticut... Claudia, this Claudia, if this is a court of law, you're Connecticut supposed to be quiet. I'm not talking. You're the one who's talking while the judge and is. Therefore finds him I've been alley. quiet. Why do they call us here at 10 o'clock if they don't want us till 12? They'll get around to you. Well, I don't like to be kept waiting. And I've half a mind to tell them so, well, too. Just save it until you're in the witness box. I will. I'll tell them. Why, well, you're... a Busy man, you can't sit here all day pretending you're not an architect. Hey, look, there's a policeman who arrested me. He did not Hello. arrest you. Well, it might have been simpler if he had. Yes, it might have that. <laughs> Shh, be quiet or I'll wring your neck. Claudia Brown Norton. David, is that me? Well, the name is familiar. <clears throat> Claudia Brown Norton is me. It is I. I mean, it's I. Take a stand. Yes, sir. I mean, yes, Judge. You call him your honor. Thanks for reminding me, David. You're fine. Now get up there. Do I, do I need powder? No, no, you don't need any powder. Don't look on. even. All right, all right. A little on your nose oh, then. Oh, dear. I knew I should have brought some with me. Now get up there or you'll be fine twice as much in absentia. Where's that? Oh, well, tell me later, darling. David, now keep your fingers crossed. Goodbye. I love you. Stop looking so pale. It's going to be fine. Claudia Brown Norton. Coming, Your Honor. Take the stand. Put your hand in the Bible and repeat after me. Will you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you, God? I swear. Sit. Officer John McCarnahan reports that you admitted to making a U-turn on an avenue where signs expressly forbid it. Do you admit the same? Uh, kindly repeat the question, Your Honor. No question. Statement of fact, uncontested. Fine. Three dollars. Wait a minute, Your Honor. I haven't said anything yet. Evidence is sufficient. U-turn on Cedar Avenue. Fine. Three dollars. Have you anything further to add, Officer McDonough? Nothing further, Your Honor. The defendant admitted to committing offense at the time. But I've had time to think it over since. What was that? I just said that I had time to think it over since. Perhaps. Next time, think it over before. Fine three dollars. Give the clerk your license. But, Your Honor, can't I have a chance to explain? Nothing to explain. Nothing at all. But, but, what if I weren't making a U-turn? Then you would have been going in the other direction. No, no, what I mean is, what if I had been going in the opposite direction without making a U-turn? Uh, it's impossible. You'd still be going in the original direction. Look, if you'll give me a chance to explain, I can... Your Honor, there's nothing to explain. The defendant admitted that she had made a U-turn in Cedar Avenue. When I got there, she had just finished driving into the rear left fender of another person's car. He drove car. into me. Did the injured prefer charges? Well, I was injured, too. My fender was. He did was. not prefer charges. Well, he preferred not to. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to pun. Then any information concerning the collision of the two vehicles, no matter whose responsibility, is declared by this court to be irrelevant, immaterial, and of no consequence. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Now, about the U-turn. There seems to be no argument, young lady, about the fact that you made a U-turn. Well, I'd just like to ask you a question, Your Honor. May I? Uh, go ahead. Now, if I hadn't been making a U-turn, if I happened to be on the other side of the street, going in the opposite direction to which I had been going, would that be an offense? Well, I don't follow quite exactly. Well, what I mean is that if I had landed on the wrong side of the street trying to back up into a parking space, I'm not a very good parker, although I've had my license for a year and I've never had a ticket. But what if I had been parking and in backing up, I'd swung out and looked as if I'd been making a U-turn? Then what? Yeah. Well, what you're saying isn't, isn't quite clear, young woman. Were you backing into a parking space? Is that it? Well, what if I had been? Well, well if you had been, you wouldn't have been making a U-turn, would you? No, I guess I wouldn't, would I? Well, then I wouldn't have to pay a fine, would I? Well, there'd be some doubt. Then what are we going to do about this? Officer oh, McTernahan, what have you to say? Well, it beats me, Your Honor. It looked like a U-turn to me, and... At the time when I said to the young... Uh, Your Honor, could, could I please... <clears throat> no, no, not another word. I haven't figured the first part yet. Well, it's perfectly simple, Your Honor. If I were going straight ahead and then turned my wheel to the right... To the right? Oh, no, I'm sorry. To the left. 
Your Honor. Yes, to, to the left. Yes. Well, anyway, so I turn my wheel and it starts to look as if I were going to turn. But. 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 I'm not. Yeah. Unless, of course, I... Did I say I turned to the left? Are you now going in the opposite direction? To what? To what you were... Hmm. Your Honor, if I may... Yes? You may not. Sentence suspended. Suspended? With no fine. And the court recommends that the defendant practice backing into a parking space in private and commit any other traffic violations she desires in a county under the jurisdiction of another court. But, Your Honor... Next case. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. But why aren't you happy, darling? I don't understand why you still aren't happy. You disgraced me. I did not. I saved you three dollars. You deserve to be fined twenty. I never said I made a U-turn. I never said it. I didn't lie. If I'd been the judge, I'd have fined you twenty for contempt of court. I didn't say one nasty thing about the court or anybody else for I that matter. I think you'd be ashamed. I'm not. David, you're going to chew off the end of your pipe looking that way. If I'd been you, I'd have been thrown in jail for acting the way you did. Probably. Just because you're a girl and you got that poor old judge so confused with your backing and you turning and parking uh-huh, and the opposite. Oh, so that's it. You're jealous because you think I got away with something. I am not <laughs> jealous. I just want you to learn your lesson for once. I just think you'd be grateful that I don't take the law lying down. After all, it's a democracy. And if the judge saw fit, I must be innocent. Well, he doesn't know you as well as I do. You were guilty. You owe that court three dollars. Would you have paid it? Gladly. Well, then give it to me and we'll all be even. What? (gasps) Men certainly are queer. They seem to love a principal more than their wife. Smile, darling. I love you more. So, I forgive you. Parts of Claudia and David on this program were played by Catherine Bard and Paul Crabtree. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. The bright, friendly red cooler that offers you ice-cold Coca-Cola in shops and amusement places and service stations is a pleasant haven when you seek the pause that refreshes. You can have a private cooler, a white cooler at home, simply by keeping the family refrigerator well supplied with Coke. Then anyone in the house can be refreshed any time of the day. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying... Au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes, and ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. <laughs>